We are gathered here today to mourn the loss of Rendog, who died like a noob while building the Cyberdog Drive-In. May his soul rest in pieces. g g g g greetings Cyberdogs and citizens of the internet. This is Rendog coming at you from the Season 4 Graveyard in this Let's Play Minecraft Survival series. In the previous episode, we were working on the Cyberdog Drive-In and trying to figure out how to install the projector room, a box office and a confectionery stand. And in this episode, my friends, we're going to continue to try and unravel that bit of crafting mystery. And in the meantime, my friends, I hope you have a freaking tasty ass beverage and some crunchy ass snacks because it is time to play some Minecraft Survival with your dog, the Ren Dog. Well, my friends, I gotta tell you, whenever we start an episode in the graveyard, it's generally not a good sign. Because it's usually a sign that we've died at some point, and that actually happened a couple of episodes ago. I had my ass handed to me by a Skelebutt while I was working on the, on the uh, drive-in. He shot some arrows into my butthole directly up my crack, went straight to my brain, and that was the end of it, man. And uh, here we are a couple episodes later, I've been delaying the inevitable, my friends, because uh, whenever I come here, it depresses me. It reminds me of such, what a freaking noob I am, man. Get, I, I'm trying to mourn here, zombie. Bastard. <laughs> but guys, I've just erected a grave in the shape of the drive-in. I think it looks kind of cool. And uh, this is just to commemorate our death when we were working on that specific build. And um, yeah, this is, oh, oh yes. Um, oh yeah, a reminder that we died in an ocean monument. Oh, and another reminder that we lost all our gear too. Zombie, you, don't, you do not want to be messing with me right now, man. I am in a, I'm, I am mourning. I am in a state of of severe and utter distress right now, man. And I'm gonna slap your ass if you come close to me. I'm gonna slap your ass too, man. You, oh, you want some. You want some. You take it. Take it. Nothing like taking out a little bit of stress on the undead, right? <laughs> but anyway, guys, before we actually die again, let's get our buttholes out of here. Um, man, I really like the, uh, the graveyard, to be honest. I wonder if we're gonna be able to fill up our Season 4 graveyard with as many graves as we managed to get in Season 3, man. Check it out. Jeez, we actually died a lot in Season 3, didn't we? It's quite ridiculous, really. Um, it's, it's kind of embarrassing, really. <laughs> I think I think we should probably leave this place uh, before, I don't know, before I facepalm again, my forehead is actually still sing um, stinging from the last facepalm I just gave myself. It was more of a face fist, to be honest with you. Um, Probably shouldn't smack myself so hard, but you know what? Sometimes you deserve a good self-smackage. You know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, guys, welcome back to this Minecraft Survival Series with me, Ren Diggity Dog. I've got a little bit of bad news for you, actually. Um, well, it's not really bad news for you. It's basically bad news for me. And, uh, man, it was actually another bit of face palming that, that went down uh, about two days ago on Saturday. I'm recording this video on Easter Monday. So if you are celebrating Easter right now, guys, happy freaking Easter. Uh, in fact, give me one second, man. I want to look you straight in the eyeballs. Happy Easter to you and your families if you are celebrating Easter this weekend. I hope you had an amazing Easter with your family and with your friends and had a whole bunch of chocolate. I hope you ate so much chocolate you wanted a freaking puke, man, because that's what Easter is all about, right? Um, <laughs> myself, I had a great Easter in uh, London. I, in fact, got a delicious Easter egg as a gift from a very fine lady know what I'm saying. Uh, so I had a really, really nice Easter, got a nice present. Um, well, I got some chocolate, okay? So, I mean, it wasn't it wasn't exactly a, a present. It was just something tasty to shove in my gob. Um, but I also didn't have a very good Easter, guys, because something really bad and something very annoying happened to me that I want to I wanna share with you guys, man. On uh, Saturday morning, I woke up bright and early to record a Minecraft survival episode, and I wanted to make an I wanted to make an extra special, extra long episode for you guys, uh, so that you could have something to watch on your Easter weekend. And I, I recorded for about an hour and forty five minutes, I would say, spent half of that time in the Nether gathering a whole bunch of glowstone, and then I spent the rest of the episode in the Cyberdog Drive and pimping that sucker out, man. It was a freaking sweet episode. Spoke a whole bunch of awesome stuff and. Uh, it was awesome, man. I loved it. However, when I stopped recording and closed Minecraft to get 
to editing the video and uploading it to YouTube, I suddenly found out uh, that I hadn't pressed record on my audio software. So uh, just give me one more, one more moment there, my friends. Yeah, I didn't record an hour and 45 minutes worth of audio and basically lost an entire episode. <laughs> um, consequently, I rage quitted. Uh, shut my computer down and went and spent a bit of time with uh, my friends because <laughs> man it was so annoying uh, but I am back and I am ready to play some more freaking Minecraft with you guys and I want to show you what I managed to finish off in that 40, uh, hour and 45 minutes when uh, I was away from you guys and as you guys can see this place is looking a little bit different already man it's looking absolutely awesome I don't want to talk about what I've done to the note boxes uh, uh, first what I do want to talk about first guys is a sweet idea that I had you know, usually it's you guys who had these awesome ideas and I kind of steal them from you and uh, give you some creds in the video. But this time around, guys, I had a freaking brainwave that I thought would be really, really sweet. So one of my favorite Minecrafters in the world is a guy called Etho. And uh, you can check out his channel on Etho, Etho's lab if you don't already know. If you don't know Etho, man, I don't know where you've been, man. You've been under a freaking rock or something. But what he did in his survival series was he added a bit of glowstone into the butthole of trees. And what it did was... Was it made the trees glow at night and it also acted as a clever and aesthetic way to to light up an area without putting torches all over the place you know at the moment we do have torches everywhere in fact we have a, a lot of torches all around our minecraft world and i want to start moving away from using torches to uh, to stop mobs spawning although we're gonna have to leave a couple of torches here i think <laughs> um, and the reason for that is guys because i think that Torches are um, a decent way to stop mob spawning, but they're also a very ugly way and not a very clever way to stop mob spawning. And I think, uh, you know, in your first couple of years of Minecraft, I think it's okay to use torches everywhere. But I think once you start playing more and more Minecraft, you actually need to find better and smarter ways to to uh, stop mob spawning and, and try and make your world as beautiful as possible. And having torches all over the show doesn't really add to that, you know, beautiful aesthetic feel. I think torches in caves is fine, but torches around builds like this, I think you need to find uh, smarter ways to actually light up your world. So what I did was I added around 60 to 64 uh, glowstone blocks into the tops of trees all the way around the circumference of the Cyberdog Drive in here. And uh, that means that all of the area around the drive and should be lit up at night time and we should be getting minimal spawns. Of course, my plan is to ship in all of the citizens of Mole City to watch the premiere of the Cyberdog Drive-In. It's going to be one of your guys' movies showing on the big screen here. And I don't want any of them, any of them to, uh, to die because then it will be a zombie apocalypse up in this jazz, man. And that is not something that I am prepared for. So what I've done, guys, is I've etherified all of the trees all the way around the drive-in. And hopefully when uh, the sun goes down and the first night of this episode, we'll be able to see whether or not that's actually freaking worked. Now, the second thing that I did was an awesome idea given to me by one of you cyber diggity dogs. And uh, a lot of you guys were complaining about the uh, about the cyber dog driving in episode 26. You guys were saying that it's probably going to be insanely loud up in here, man. And uh, you know what? That's actually true. Before I, I added these trap doors to the sides of all of the speakers here, what you could basically see was a whole bunch of open speakers right so everywhere you looked was a speaker and you can just imagine how freaking loud that would actually be if you were parked here on your horse to watch the cyber dog drive in premiere you got an eco a speaker blasting into your ear hole from this side and blasting into your other ear hole from this side and then blasting into your face from the front here, man. You're going to be deaf as they come. And if you're in this position over here, man, you got speakers blasting all up in your jazz all the way around you, man. You're going to have all of these speakers pumping directly into your ear holes. And man, something's going to go wrong up in there. So one of you guys suggested adding some trap doors to all of the sides of the speakers that we don't want to use. And I think this is a really awesome and really elegant solution. And I think that it's also added a bit of like Rentopia flavor to the drive-in you know we use a lot of a lot of wood and a lot of sort of natural looking uh, builds in our particular style here in Rentopia so I think this kind of adds to that quite nicely I think it looks really really sweet and it's also taken away a whole bunch of that metal look that we had before and now of course when you park here to watch the uh, the premiere you're only going to have one speaker and of course maybe a slightly deaf in your right ear you could pop that up and uh, you could get that ear hole blasting also and then you could hear perfectly man in, in stereo no less 
Uh, but I think that's an absolutely awesome solution. And thank you to the Cyber Diggity Dog who gave me that idea. I think it's absolutely awesome. All right, my friends, next up on the agenda for today's episode is to work on the confectionery stand, the projector room, and the box office room here at the Cyberdot Drive-In. And unfortunately, I've used most of my freaking wood to make these trap doors, so I'm gonna have to head over to the wood groves down there to get a little bit more wood. And I've already started the smelting of all of the iron that we found in the caves beneath the Cyberdog Drive-In. And I think, guys, I'm gonna go and do this off camera. I'm waiting for the sun to go down so that we can see the effects of our etho trees around the cyber dog drive. And I think that's gonna be pretty awesome. So I tell you what, my friends, I'm gonna plan the sucker, go cut down a whole bunch of oak wood trees. And when I have enough wood to continue on this build, I will see you back on the other side of this kaplowie. Kaplooey. All right, welcome back, my friends. I've just managed to pick up a stack of oak wood and a stack of spruce wood here from the groves. And I think, yeah, that's probably gonna be enough for our needs for now. I'll probably cut down all of these at some point because uh, when we start working on Mole City again, we're probably gonna need a few more. But let's take a quick tour around the circumference of the Cyberdog Drive-In to have a look at if our etho trees are doing the business. As you guys can see, man, it is looking really bright around here. There's a little bit of spawning going on over here though. Um, Hmm. We might need to add another protective layer of, of etho trees, possibly. We might need to add like another entire row over here. What we could possibly do too is add some light fixtures around here. That could probably be a solution. We could also fence off the entire area. So we could add like a like an iron fence all the way around or even just a spruce wood fence or something like that. Uh, all the way around the, the lit up area so that mobs wouldn't be able to actually walk in from the shadowed areas. Uh, that could work too, man. I, I don't know. Let, let's have a look. Let's, let's do a little bit of work on site in the middle of the night and let's see if we get any mobs coming to annoy us while we're trying to do some work around here. But let's try and get a nice sweet view from on top of this nubivator and as you guys can see man we have got etho trees all the way around the circumference of the cyber dog drive and looks really really sweet i think and i think it's probably going to work quite well you can see some skeletons have spawned down there and there we saw a few spiders and a few zombies spawned over there but as far as uh, right next to the drive-in is concerned we are not seeing any mob spawnage at all which is absolutely awesome so that kind of shows me that this is working the way that i want it to man which is epic and uh, this means that we can crack on with working on the building here without well hopefully without having to worry about getting waylaid by enemies and uh, possibly dying again <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna die again guys seriously you can only die on a build once you know there's like an unwritten rule in Minecraft where you know if you can die on a build once and if you die on a build more than once Shame on you. <laughs> All right, my friends, welcome back. I've just been sorting out my inventory for today's build. We're going to be using oak wood planks, spruce wood planks, oak wood logs, some stone bricks, and possibly some cobblestone. I've been trying to figure out exactly what the palette of this particular build is going to be. And um, I'm thinking that stone bricks might be a, an interesting take on this particular build because it's kind of in the style of Mole City. And I'm trying to figure out whether or not this drive-in can be considered like um, a part of Mole City. Like, who owns this drive-in, right? Is it, is it the Griswold family's drive-in? Is it the Mole Mart drive-in? Um, and I'm not entirely sure exactly uh, what the answer to that question is. So I'm just going to do a little bit of experimenting, I think. And I think what I do want to do is make like a really nice counter like that. Um, although maybe we want to make the counter out of out of wood because i think that's going to look quite nice man these dogs are barking like nobody's business there's got to be some danger up in here um let's make let's try and make it out of wood instead oak wood stairs does that look what does oak wood stairs look like as a counter let's have a look yeah that looks pretty cool i think that that works really nicely oh zombie you do not want to mess with me bro i'm gonna shoot you in your undead bits Give me your balls. <laughs> All right, there we go. Yeah, I kind of like that. And then underneath, um, let's go with, I think we've got to go with like, um, yeah, that looks really nice actually. We'll go with stone bricks underneath and then we'll go with a counter on top. 
And then what I want to do is add another counter back here that's going to hold things like cakes and cookies and sweet ass tasty beverages. You know, this is, you know, we always talk about tasty ass beverages and crunchy ass snacks up in this series. And this is where I want you to come and buy them. <laughs> I want you to be satisfied uh, while you are watching a movie in the Cyberdog Driver, man. I want you to have access to the sweetest snacks and the most tasty ass beverages known to man. Um, yeah, that's looking pretty awesome, guys. Yeah, I think this is working out quite nicely over here, guys. What I've done is I've added a mixture of gravel and andesite to this particular uh, road structure over here, and it, it kind of gives it an, a feeling of age. Die, you burning bastard! <laughs> um, and it also... What it does is it continues on the road, right? So if you're traveling to the Cyberdog Drive-In from, uh, from Mole City... Oh, wait, that's definitely the wrong block in there. Um, you buy your ticket from the box office, and then before you go and find your, your parking space, you take a left turn over here, and then this is where you'll come in and buy your sweet-ass confectionaries. Uh, so I think that works fairly decently. Maybe what we need is a separation of the road and the gravel um, over here. That might be a thing. We also might need to... Hmm, I think probably there needs to be one more layer of stone brick right in this position over here. Check it out, guys. I think what we'll do is add one more layer like this and we can probably get rid of that. Yeah, I think that's pretty sweet. Um, so it's kind of like, you know, you would come and stand here and you would you'd place your order with one of the mole citizens that's going to be working in here. So I think that works really nicely and we can get rid of all of this dirt here and probably replace... Actually, you know what? I think we could probably leave this dirt here. This I think it works quite nicely. Maybe just add a bit of... Hmm. Add a bit of gravel there, I think. And then what we could do is let's just get rid of this crafting table. No, you know what? I want the I want I want to grow something in this position over here, right? So let's add the dirt back to this location. We'll wait for the grass to grow back over that, and then we can use some bone meal to get some some foliage growing here. Um, and I guess yeah, we won't do the same on this side. But what we can do is grow up the stuff now. Like let, let's get a nice tall bit of grass over here over here there we go all right my friends welcome back i'm just working on the exterior design of this building i quite like this mixture of oak and stone bricks i think it looks pretty cool i'd like to try and break up the stone bricks though maybe with the odd cracked stone brick here and there or, or mossy stone brick could also look pretty cool I think that'll uh, help to sort of break it up a little bit. The only part that I'm not entirely happy about is this uh, sort of stair next to this oak log. I, I don't know, man. It just doesn't seem to be working very well for me. Uh, I'm not entirely 100% sold on that one. But we can't get rid of this brick because these are these sort of support pillars of the building. And I don't think we can actually cut down these oak uh, log supports like that. That... It's probably not going to make a lot of sense, but I guess what we should probably do is work on on completing the rest of the building's foundations, and then we can sort of take it from there. I think this building is probably going to need to be a little bit longer, um, just so that the box office has a little bit of space to work with. And uh, let's have we got some dirt? Yeah, yeah. This is where a creeper exploded, man. You can always see where a, a creeper has come and freaking laid its business and. And done its dirty deeds, can't you, man? It's 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 like a scar on the freaking land and a scar on my freaking soul, also, man. Um, what I also need to make sure, guys, is that I have enough space to make a projector. I haven't quite worked out exactly how we are going to make a projector yet, but <laughs> I'm trying to figure it out. Some of you guys are giving me some excellent uh, uh, bits of advice and some really good, good ideas, but I guess a projector is going to be. Um, I think the position is uh, here. Is, is almost smack bang in the middle. Um, and I, I'm thinking like a projector is probably going to be something like, let's just make like a, let's just make like a, like a, a really crude looking projector for now, right? So let's say this is the projector like this. Man, that is some butt ugly pro projecting going on over there. Uh, but let, let's just make this the projector for now, guys. Don't worry, man. I'm going to make a sweet ass projector. But if that's the projector, then we need a little bit more space behind the projector inside of this room so we're going to need to build a little bit more space like that there we go and then we'll probably need like a table uh in this position you know to hold the films and whatnot oh my goodness what is going on uh <laughs> we need like a table in this position but i think we can probably go 
Yeah, I think we can go one more out. Uh, we can make the, the this this floor a little bit wider, actually. We can make it one block wider like this. That's going to give our table a little bit more space uh, on this side. Let's just get rid of this. Do we have any more weird stairs here? We've got some more wood stairs. So we could put like a table over here of some kind. This is where you would put your projector reels. And maybe we could have a couple of chairs, maybe a, a fridge or something like that. I mean, you know, a, a, project a projectionist has got to eat, right? <laughs> um, so the projector is going to look something like that. Then, yeah, I think this is about right, I would say. This feels like enough space in this projector room, I think. Yeah, I think I'm quite happy with that. Um, and then, I think, yeah, that's not a lot of space in the confectionery room, but this is going to be the confectionery stand. So this is where we're going to be putting all the tasty-ass snacks and beverages. And behind this stand, I think we'll probably have, um, like, a, a few shelves. So if that's the confectionery stand, hmm, I kind of like that that color might need to change these stairs to to spruce wood stairs but uh, if this is the confectionery stand and then this is the the shelf behind the confectionery stand right so let's just get these are all foundations my friends these are all foundations so just ignore these for now then the wall of the confectionery room is going to start here isn't it let's just get these foundations in place like this yeah, so the wall of the confectionery room is going to start there. Then that's that should give the confectionist enough space. And then we'll have like a little... Hmm, maybe maybe we can make like a little staircase or something over here to get down from the projection room. And we can have this sort of, uh, this sort of outcut over here. I think that works really nicely. I think that looks kind of cool. Um, and of course, this is where the next foundation pillar is going to go like that yeah that looks awesome man and then we can have cyber dog drive-in written over here somehow maybe in like a sweet ass sign or something maybe we can make a banner for it i don't know man but yeah that's looking kind of cool um I, i'm really enjoying where the foundation of this building is coming guys i think it's coming a long way it's looking pretty sweet i think we need to pimp it out a little bit though um and i'm going to be looking in the comment section of this video guys for some ideas on how to make this building even more freaking awesome but i'm looking at my watch guys and we are running out of time which means we've only got one more thing to do in today's episode and that is of course to get eight more of you cyber diggity dogs onto the dogolith well my friends unfortunately we have come to the end of today's survival video but there's just one more thing to do and that is of course to get eight more of you guys onto the dogolith the giant ass monolith dedicated to all of the subscribers and viewers of the ren diggity dog channel so without further ado please welcome to the dogolith from youtube subscribers we have got seijuro akashi daminatro 92 ash the dragon and nick Wolf, thank you for your sweet ass comments and welcome to the Doglith, my friends. You have been immortalized in the interbubs forever. And now from dogcraft.net, the official cyber dog fan community, we have got not your everyday idiot, Zinni6751, the Gurch guy, and two wing nut. <laughs> Welcome to the Dogolith, my friends. Thank you so much for your subscriptions and for your awesome comments on one of my videos. And remember, guys, if you want to get your buttholes onto the Dogolith, you need to be a subscriber of the Ren Dog channel and you need to leave me a constructive comment here and there on one of my videos. I select you guys randomly from the comments across all of my videos. There is also a thread on dogcraft.net, the official CyberDog fan community, where you can leave your YouTube username to stand a chance of being added to the dogolith well my friends i really hope you enjoyed this episode if you have you know what to do man you hit that like button and if you have not subscribed yet i don't know what is wrong with your freaking ass hit that subscribe button thank you so much for watching this video my friends this has been ren diggity dog playing minecraft survival and we will see y'all in the next episode